Hello everyone, my name is J.R. Tallman, and today I'll be taking you through how to enable and configure Advanced Expense Management, or AEM, within NetSuite. Advanced Expense Management is an overhaul of the existing amortization feature, which provides more flexibility and an improved user experience. Now, Advanced Expense Management is very similar to the design of ARM, or Advanced Revenue Management, by using plans to manage amortization, which you'll see in just a moment as I go through this demo. The first thing you're going to need to do within NetSuite to enable advanced expense management is to file a support case. Uh, you just can't go into NetSuite and enable this feature, so you will need to create a support case, which I'll list in the description of this video. Once you create the support case and it's all good to go, you can go ahead and go to Setup, Company, and Enable Features. The advanced expense management feature is found underneath the accounting subtab here. And if I go down to the advanced features field grouping, you'll notice a new field called advanced expense management. Now I already have this feature enabled within my account. As you can see, it's grayed out. It's very similar to advanced revenue management if that's um, part of your implementation or configuration. Um, once I enable this feature, I cannot disable it. So it is highly recommended to do this testing uh, and configuration setup and sandbox first before you move to production. You'll note that I also have advanced uh, amortization, the old legacy way, um, already enabled, so these can run side by side. Uh, they use some of the, the same features, which you'll see as I go through this, uh, but I would highly recommend using advanced expense management moving forward as this will be uh, enabled in new accounts and future releases. So once advanced ex expense management feature is enabled, what we can go ahead and do is take a look at some of the new uh, navigation paths within NetSuite. If we go up to list, accounting, and what you'll see is expense amortization events, rules, and plans. So these are new pages that you can go to within NetSuite. Uh, what we'll be taking a look at today in this demo is the rules and the plans. If you do want to have some more custom integration uh, to trigger the amortization, you can certainly use events very similar to the revenue recognition events if you're using that today. But let's go ahead and take a look at the expense amortization rules, uh, as this is the first page that you'll want to come to once you enable advanced expense management. So on this page, uh, there are two rules that come default within the system. The first one is the default percent complete, and then the second one here is the default standard rule. Now, I would recommend creating a new rule um, personally, um, and most likely you'll do, do the same as um, we're not going to be looking at the percent complete, and the default standard rule here is just set up so it is recognizing 100% uh, basically upfront, right, uh, recon or amortize amortizing that 100% up front. The one I created was called start and end date, um, but you can certainly rename it to whatever you need to. But what this one's doing is very similar to the legacy revenue or amortization within the system, where it's recognizing uh, and amortizing it based on the start and end dates on the transaction line. So let's just go ahead and take a look at um, this rule by clicking into the number here, number three. And I'll go ahead and edit this, although I won't be able to edit much uh, on this rule since it's already been used. You can see I can certainly edit the, the name if I wanted to. Uh, the method, you can go ahead and select if you are creating a new rule in the system. Uh, in this instance, uh, or at least this demo, I'm going to be using it straight line by even periods, but feel free to modify as necessary. Uh, the key, though, is going to be the start and end date. And as you can see, I have transaction line start date and transaction line end date. All right, so it's going to be amortizing based on that start and end date by even periods. Now, if you do want to recognize or amortize based on the terms uh, and months or days uh, or even periods, you could certainly do that uh, with your start and end date. But it will probably take a little bit more work to configure within the system, uh, depending on how many months you have or, or different months that you have uh, based on the type of bills that you're entering in the system. Um, let's just go ahead and create a, a new uh, amortization rule just so I can show you the, the different features or uh, items here. So we'll go ahead and uh, create a new amortization rule. And you can see my start date if I use the drop down here. I do have some different options. I have subscription management uh, or suite billing enabled in this environment. So you can see I have subscription event start date. But typically, I would uh, expect to see most uh, clients uh, use transaction line start date as the, the start date source. And then the amortization end date most likely is going to be your transaction line end date as well.
Okay. Now there are some other features here uh, that you can certainly enable um, if you want to enter a contract count or residual value not to amortize uh, and so forth. But again, if you want a straightforward one that's most likely going to be used in the system, keep this transaction line start date and transaction line end date as the end date source and select your method and give it a name. So once you have the rule set up, um, you should be good to go, uh, at least for amortization within the system. Uh, let's go back to the rules here. The one I'm going to demo in this particular video is the start and end date. But again, feel free to try these out in one of your sandbox environments as necessary. Now, one thing that you should be aware of before I get into this is you do need a deferral account set up on your expense account in the system. I've already done that. That's typical configuration within the system. So I'm not going to show you that piece today, uh, but it is... Uh, required to have that. Otherwise, when you enter a vendor bill with an amortization rule, it will air out and you won't be able to save. So let's go ahead and enter a vendor bill now. I'll go ahead and enter a vendor here. And I'm going to change the approval status to pending approval. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to show you how the, the plan uh, that gets generated to amortize the uh, amount that I'm going to be listing down here does not get started until this has been approved. And then I'm going to go ahead and select an account that has a deferral account already selected on it. So if I go ahead and select an insurance expense that has a deferral account set on it, and I'll go ahead and do an amount here. I'm also going to put a memo. So one of the new features within, uh, or at least enhancements that I like about this uh, feature within the uh, NetSuite environment is if you're looking at reports and the journal entries that get created, this memo will be copied over to the journal entries. So if you can easily distinguish what you're amortizing uh, on your journal entries. Um, before with the legacy amortization, the memo did not get copied over. So it is a nice feature uh, with the, the memo here. So let's just call this uh, memo one, two, three. And then you'll see some new columns. And if these columns are not showing when you're going through this in the system, I would recommend uh, showing these right at the line, either with the expense or the item. The first one here is going to be the expense amortization rule. So this rule that I'm going to go ahead and be selecting is the start and end date one that I was just showing you. The create expense plans on is going to be transaction posting. We're not going to change that. Uh, certainly if you had a custom event and so forth, we could change that, but uh, this one will most likely be transaction posting uh, for, for the, the individuals viewing this video. Amortization start date, let's go ahead and start this in the middle of the month here, and then we'll end this at the end of the year. Okay, so those are the new fields that are added once advanced expense management is enabled in the system. All right, so you can see it's pending approval now once I save this. And if I go down to the line, um, we do have an amortization plan um, icon that we could easily uh, take a look at. And if I go ahead and click on that icon, you'll see my expense plans get generated um, on clicking that icon. And in this case, I don't have any plans. And the reason why I don't have any plans is because this is still pending approval. All right, so once it gets uh, approved, you'll see some plans get generated and it will amortize based on the start and end dates, or it should. Okay, so let's go ahead and approve this bill. And once this bill is approved, you can go back down to the line and go to the expense amortization plan icon where you see two new plans got generated and an actual and a forecast. Now my actual and forecast are going to be the same with my start and end dates. So the one we're going to be taking a look at here is going to be the actual plan that my journal entries will be going off of. So if I go ahead and click on expense plan number 16, it will take me into the plan itself and show me what's going to be amortized or recognized based on my start and end dates and my method that I have selected by even periods. Right, so you can see it started in July uh, and went through December. 
So this looks good. I could modify this if I wanted to, right, with proper permissions, but there's really no need to, to modify that. Um, but this is very similar to advanced revenue management if you're familiar with that within NetSuite. Okay. So if this looks all good, that's, that's fine. Uh, at the end of the month then, or when uh, appropriate, what you would do is to create the amortization journal entries. And the process for doing this is, is the same that it has been. They did not switch up this within the system. But you would go to Transactions Financial, Schedule Amortization Journal Entries, and Run Now. You could also schedule these. That's not a new feature that came out in one of the previous versions. Uh, I have my posting period here with July 2019. And then down below here, um, you can see that my plan number 16 is showing. So while I'm on here, I'm just going to go and approve this journal. And I'm going to go and create the journal entries. All right, so this is complete. That looks good. So let's go ahead and take a look at my journal that got generated for this particular entry. There it is. And this is the journal that got generated and it's approved. But what's nice, as I mentioned before with my bill, right, and plan number 16 is on the memo here, it actually includes that description from the original line of that vendor bill. Now, I don't really like how it says amortization destination and source here, um, but uh, certainly if you were looking at a general ledger report or any other type of financial report with a NetSuite, uh, it would show this memo as long as you have it added. Um, so that's, I know, a, a big enhancement um, from the prior amortization amortization or legacy revenue or legacy amortization within NetSuite. And again, uh, we could go to reports, financial, and you'll see um, we still have the same report here, expense amortization and forecast, right? We could go into here and we could certainly look at my forecasted amortization uh, based on my start and end dates. So in this case, I have July to, let's go ahead and expand this out to December here. And you'll be able to see the, the one that I created here, um, one of these. I don't know how much my original value was, but um, this is my amortization forecast. And I could certainly uh, capture this by month if I wanted to by using the column filter at the bottom here and changing this to accounting period and by refreshing the report. So let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. And you can see uh, mine is number two here, right? Because we went out through December of 2019. So you can see what's being recognized uh, or has been recognized uh, as necessary in the system. Okay, so if I expand this more or less icon, uh, I can use is recognized and it will show me what's been recognized or not recognized within the system in the uh, appropriate period. All right, so that's a very brief demo of advanced expense amortization in NetSuite. I uh, hope you found this video useful. Feel free to look at my other videos. And if you have any requests or comments, feel free to contact me directly. I appreciate it.